Hello everyone, it's me Robert and welcome, welcome after a while. So last time I talked about the Soviet SHM-1 gas mask and this time I'm going to discuss about the successor of the SHM-1 and the clones that were made after this one. So, let's begin with the little history part. During World War II, to be more specific, in 1941, the development of the SHM-41 started, but obviously, because of the war, it was interrupted and started again and actually started the production of the gas mask after World War II in the 50s. My gas mask here, it's made in Yaroslav in 1952, to be more precise. And uh, most of these gas masks were manufactured since the 1950s to the middle of the Cold War, if I'm not wrong. And being the successor of the SHM-1, we should discuss, I mean, I should discuss the differences between these two gas masks. At the first sight, they don't seem very different. Uh, one of the main differences that uh, you can see, and I want to correct something from my previous video, one of the main difference is the is the fact that now they used crimped rings for these gas masks and in the last video I said that uh, all of the SHM-1 didn't use crimped rings uh, that's in fact quite wrong they used crimped rings for some of those uh, mostly for those for, for the late models as far as I know another difference between these two it's the color of the valve assembly this one is quite brownish compared to the SHM-1 which had a different type of colors for example the dark blue gray and so on. One of the biggest difference between these two and the most uh, notable it's the TSO tubes. As I said in the previous video the SHM-1 had separate TSO tubes which were not part of the face piece itself. Now this time the TSO tubes are part of the face piece itself. The, the TSO tubes are molded in, into the face piece basically. This is about the construction of the gas mask. It's quite similar in, in terms of looks, so that's why a lot of people say it's the same gas mask and in the end call it the GP5, but in fact it is not. This gas mask was issued to the Soviet forces in the 50s. It came in a kit which should contain one of these two bags. Here I have the first bag. Uh, here it has a small pocket. Uh, it had a leather belt here to close the, the bag itself. The two straps, one for your hip and one for your uh, for your shoulder. Here is the inside of the mask. I'll show you more pictures on the screen. It basically has uh, three separate areas: one for the mask, one for the filter, and one for the hose. And in the middle one, uh, it has a, a small pocket for anti-fogging lenses, which I have right here. They would come in a red tin package made of metal and the second carrier for this kit would look like this it is in my opinion a bit more simpler it doesn't have that pocket the outside pocket it is made of a better material i would say this is actually the the carrier that came with my shm 41 gas mask on the inside it's quite the same thing uh, three separate areas for gas mask filter and hose and in the middle a small uh, pocket for the anti-fogging lenses uh, here I have a date stamp, this one is from 1952. Uh, other accessories that the mask would come with uh, in, in, in the kit would be the hose, something uh, like this one. This is the hose that came with my mask. It has almost the same color here as the um, valve box, it kind of matches the colors. It would come with a EO12 coffee can style filter. Uh, this one, it's made in 1951, uh, these are other uh, stamps on the filter, like uh, the date for example, the lot number and uh, <coughs> more uh, details from the factory. Here's another stamp on the filter, the rubber plug at the back and if you can see the inside of the filter, it's quite a big filter, quite a heavy one. And uh, another interesting item that is not that common uh, found on the market and I really like it's this rubber part that would come over the valve box and it has a quite interesting function. The, the valve assembly from the SHM-41 has the same functionality as the valve on the SHM-1 
it's basically only one valve, one uh, rubber, uh, one rubber cover valve for the exhale valve. And the Soviets came to the conclusion in the 50s that uh, they should uh, change their standards. They thought it's not enough for, uh, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it was not enough to keep you safe from different particles or gases. So this one uh, would add a second layer, a second uh, valve cover for the gas mask. Other people say it would be part of a winterization kit as a winterization kit. So yeah, this one it's interesting. The, the rubber part here, I do not know how it is called in English. Uh, has a similar stamp as on the gas mask. It was made in 1955 in Yaroslav. Uh, there's a stamp on the rubber basically and uh, there's a paint stamp on the inside. I'll show you the pictures on the screen. And it's, it's horrible to mount that on the gas mask, to be honest. That's why it's not on the gas mask right now. So yeah, that's basically about uh, it, about the history of it. Uh, who used it, that's the kit of it. Uh, you, uh, as I always do, I also add a little bit of text on the screen, correcting something that I said wrong in the video or, or just adding more extra information about it. And a little bit about the stamps on the gas mask, you'll see that they are still not in the same place on the everyone's known GP5 gas mask that will be covered in a future video. They are the same stamps that we are all used to them, the, the factory uh, letter, the year of production and the lot number. Uh, and obviously the sizes on the both chicks. And on the inside, with a little bit of paint or pen, let's say, there are uh, different quality check uh, stamps and different ears. Uh, what I really like about this subject, about the SHM41, it's that it started being manufactured in uh, uh, big numbers right at the beginning of the Cold War, when most of the Eastern, uh, when most of the Eastern European countries turned to communism and started the being uh, a satellite to the Soviet uh, Union. So they started importing licenses from the Soviet Union for different equipment, including gas masks. So this time we have more countries that got the license for this gas mask. Uh, I'll make the video in two parts. This, this one will be about the Polish SZM41 and the next video will be about the Romanian MD-52 and the Czech M-52. So with all of this said, I will let Jakub from the Geiger21 uh, YouTube channel to speak more about the Polish SZM-41. And here you have it. Hi, thanks for having me. The SM-41 was a first gas mask produced in post-war Poland. Its production started around the year 1952. Before that mask, we've used Soviet SHM-1 and both masks were issued to TOPL, Field Anti-Aircraft Defense, and to industry, but the SHM-1's industrial usage is not documented anywhere as far as I'm concerned. Beside that, the SM-41 was issued to firefighters. In industry, it was later mostly displaced by MA-1 and by GSPM in fire brigades. The industrial nickname of that mask was MU, Maska Universalna. In military use, it was issued with a stockinet covered hose and a Polish MO2 filter. Uh, thank you a lot, Jakub, for the presentation. Uh, and now I'll show you my uh, SZM41. Here it is. It is very similar to the Soviet one. And even the rubber color, it's almost identical. Quite dark gray, I would say. Uh, the stamps are very different on this gas mask. The color of the valve assembly, it's totally different. At this time, it's olive green. Um, the sizing stamp, it's the same. But here we have different stamps. We have the year of production, so I believe it's 1956. These are the anti-fogging lenses that came with this gas mask when I received it from Poland. And also as an accessory to the kit would be the filter EO14. Uh, this one is made, I believe, in 1970. I hope I'm not wrong and I'm not uh, confusing kits and filters because that's kind of easy to do when there are plenty of variations of a very common mask and filter. And I also have this one that's quite similar, but I cannot distinguish the year of production. And it's funny because this one is quite shiny and this one is not. Uh, and this one has the 
the name of the filter on the back EO14 and it's quite a different stamp it's made in the metal and the stamps on the filters are quite different so yeah I hope you guys liked this video uh, thank you again Jakub for collabing with me in this one and see you next time at the second part about the Romanian and the Czech clones of the SHM41. Thank you and goodbye.